Welcome back to this channel for practice problems for actuarial exams. My name is Krzysztof Astaszewski. You can find information about me at smarturl.it forward slash Jedi. My advice on how to pass actuarial exams is at smarturl.it forward slash pass. My YouTube channel is at smarturl.it forward slash pass actuarial exams. My DTube channel is at smarturl.it forward slash the same country club. My, my dlive.io channel is at smarturl.it forward slash go pass me some exams. I uh, teach online seminars for exams PFM, IFM, and LTAM. And you can find information at smarturl.it forward slash btdt online. My manuals are available um, at these. Uh, addresses on the internet. So if you want to get my uh, exam P manual, it's at smarturl.it forward slash btdt dash P. And the same for FM. Instead of P, it has dash FM, dash IFM for IFM, and dash LTAM for LTAM. I direct the actuarial program at Illinois State University. You can find information about it at smarturl.it forward slash actuary. And uh, if you would like to make a tax-deductible donation to support our students, please go to smarturl.it forward slash help ISU actuary. Here is an exercise for exam P on probability. Um, it was originally posted as a PDF file on February 17, 2007, and it is now a video uh, for September 9, 2018. A company manufactures a brand of light bulb with a lifetime in months that is normally distributed with mean 3 and variance 1. A consumer buys a number of these bulbs with the intention of replacing them success successively as they burned out. The light bulbs have independent lifetimes. What is the smallest number of bulbs to be purchased so that the success succession of light bulbs for produces light for at least 40 months with probability of at least 0.9772. So let's write x1, x2, and so on up to xn for the lifespans of the n light bulbs purchased. We don't know what n is, we're trying to establish it. Since these random variables are independent and normally distributed uh, with mean 3 and variance 1 each, the random variable, which is a sum of them, is also normally distributed with mean equal to 3n and standard deviation equal to uh, square root of n times 1, so square root of n. We want to choose the smallest value for n such that the, the probability that s is greater than or equal to 40 is greater than or equal to 0.9772, but s uh, probability that s is greater than or equal to 40 is uh, the same as probability that s minus 3n over square root of n is greater than or equal to 40 minus 3n over square root of n. And this random variable s minus 3n over square root of n, that's the standardized version of a normal random variable, so it's standard normal. And we can therefore use the common notation z for it, z standing for a standard normal random variable and write that uh, probability that z is greater than or equal to 40 minus 3n over square root of n is greater than or equal to 0.9772 or probability that z is less than 40 minus 3n over square root of n um, is less than 0.0228 and from the standard normal table or also there is a, a um, software that gives you these values on the test um, standard normal uh, calculator. Uh, phi of 2, the cumulative distribution function of a standard normal random variable evaluated at 2 is 0 0.9772 so that uh, phi of negative 2, which is 1 minus phi of 2, because for um, a standard normal random variable, uh, CDF, cumulative distribution function, phi of uh, minus x is equal to 1 minus phi of x. And you need to remember that, of course, for the test. That's because of the symmetry of the um, density of the standard normal distribution around zero. So um, that's equal to 1 minus 0 0.9772, which is 0 0.0228. And that's exactly the probability that we're dealing with. 
Well, given that, um, because the cumulative distribution function of a standard normal distribution is strictly increasing, we must have uh, this, that 40 minus 3n divided by square root of n is less than negative 2. So we try to work this out um, by solving for n, and we just solve the corresponding equation for n, 40 minus 3n of a square root of n is equal to negative 2, or 3n minus 2 square roots of n minus 40 is equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation if you consider square root of n to be um, the unknown, and therefore square root of n must be equal to 2 plus minus to a square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 40, the whole thing divided by 2 times 3. This is 2 plus minus square root of 484 divided by square root of 6. I'm sorry, divided by uh, 6, not square root of 6. Um, so 2 plus minus square root of 484 divided by 6. That's the same as 2 plus minus 22 divided by 6, so it's either negative 10 over 3 or 4. But this is the square root of um, an integer, so the answer of negative 10 over 3 doesn't make any sense. So only 4 makes sense as the answer. So square root of n is 4, and then n is 16, and that's the answer that we pick. Please remember that this is copyrighted material. The problem itself belongs to a society of actuaries. The solution is mine. Good luck in your studies and good luck on the test.